yes, 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 yes. Here we are. We are here to break down the LA Rams versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Guys, I am so hyped. This is beyond belief. We are not one, not two, not three. I won't count all the way. We are eight slumbers away from the Super Bowl. Oh, man. It was so exciting. I do have a guest with me today. Uh, the perfect podcast. You can find the link in the description below. Guys, we're going to take a bit of a, a different approach to this. We have uh, myself, who's a Rams fan, and then we have Frankie, who's going to come in here, and he's a Bengals fan. And then we decided, you know, in case things get out of hand or something like that, we're going to have a moderator uh, who is Alex, who is a Dolphins fan, who no offense to the Dolphins. Uh, they probably want to talk about other teams right now anyway. So we'll bring him on in here. Hello, guys. How are you doing today? Doing great. Hey, I'm doing well. And, and Alex, the Dolphins kind of won the Super Bowl because at least there's not going to be an undefeated team this season. There you go. <laughs> that is a fantastic point. Dolphins fans, I will say, probably one of the best things every single year is watching that final undefeated team lose their first game. This year was the uh, Cardinals losing and week eight. Uh, fantastic. Amazing. You'll never, ever beat Larry Zonka smoking a cigar. So, you know, Joe what? Burrow might have something to say about that. Joe Burrow definitely has something to say about it. That's for sure. So, anyway. Peo, thank you so much for having us on here. Uh, We appreciate this very, very much. Just to help us break down the Super Bowl, that'll be next Sunday, which is absolutely insane. Eight days left, but just a quick introduction. My name is Alex. This is Frankie. We are part of the Perfect Season podcast. We were originally named the Milk and Cookies podcast, but quickly changed our names not even a week ago. We are an everything football type channel. Every team, everything. Twenty. Well, maybe not 24-7, but... We're, we're, we're pretty good on reporting everything as one fast day, as we can. One day, one day. One day, one day. Yeah. But, yeah, just thank you so much for having us on here. Uh, yeah, totally. And and for all of you who are watching, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I see some of you guys are going to be in and out or only here for a little bit. That's totally cool. We appreciate you coming in. I do encourage you to subscribe to the Perfect Season Podcast. Link to their channel is in the description below. And uh, also... Uh, during this, I'm going to turn it over to Alex a little bit to kind of moderate uh, a discussion between Frankie and myself. And uh, so I, I am going to turn that over to you, Alex, and I, I'm excited to see where this goes. But if you're watching and you have a question or a comment, put it in the chat. We'll do our best to be as interactive as possible. Uh, and and I'll, I'll try and bring it up on screen. Uh, but so stoked that you guys are here watching with us uh, and we hope you enjoy what we're chatting about over to you Alex yeah absolutely just what Peo said uh, if you guys got any questions relating to the Super Bowl football Bengals Rams please go ahead and put them in the comments we'll try to I'll try to ask as many as I can that I see but without further ado gentlemen eight days away Super Bowl two teams left the LA Rams and the Cincinnati Bengals how does it feel to be arguably the two best teams in the league right now I'll let you start, Frankie. <laughs> Thank you, Peo. You know, I, I'm I'm still trying to to wrap my brain around the fact that the Bengals, after 31 <laughs> years of not winning just a single playoff game, are going to the Super Bowl. Like every day I get up, I, I wake up, I'm like, wait, the Bengals are in the. I have to remind myself the Bengals are in the <laughs> Super Bowl, but it, I shouldn't be shocked though because the Bengals have a talented team. They have a top 10 quarterback in the NFL, top five arguably in Joe Burrow. They have a wide receiver who's going to be, I believe, Offensive Rookie of the Year in Jamar Chase. And they have a much improved defense that, yes, at times has struggled this season. But the one thing they have done a very good job at this season, this postseason, forcing turnovers. They are they have seven forced turnovers this postseason and they've only given up the ball or they've only given the ball away twice. So a plus five turnover differential. Um so at the same time, while I'm still trying to wrap my brain around the fact that the Cincinnati Bengals, the team I've rooted for my entire life, which I got into football in 2006, are in the Super Bowl, I shouldn't be because this is a very good Bengals team. This is a team that is very talented offensively, but they also are very good defensively. They're much improved. All the free agents they signed last offseason, Trey Hendrickson, Chadobia Wouzier, Mike Hilton, Eli Apple even, they have all delivered um, paid dividends. So... 
they finished as the fourth seed in the AFC, but I always knew that they were amongst the best teams in the AFC because that because of Joe Burrow, because of Jamar Chase, and because of that defense. And oh, by the way, it doesn't hurt to have a kicker, a really good kicker on your team. So it sometimes <laughs> does pay to draft a kicker even in the fifth round. It's certainly paying off for the Cincinnati Bengals, a team that, and I will be completely honest, Frankie has been on this podcast for a good long time. I have not been the biggest Bengals supporter when it comes to the postseason. I had them beating the Raiders, but when it came to the Titans game, I had them losing. When it came to last week in the Chiefs, I had them losing. So you know what? Honestly, the Bengals deserve it. Like, why not? They proved everybody wrong for the AFC. So why not? Absolutely. And, and you know, I also the Bengals team that, you know, was pulling all year. I can't remember. It was actually like, oh man, the Bengals won. No, like, I it's it's fun and like I remember I, there was a midway point of the season where the Bengals were the number one seed in the AFC, and I was like, cool, that looks weird. Um, but okay, cool. And uh, then when they were able, you know, to to beat the Raiders, I think you know, you can have an argument that the Raiders could have won that game for sure, but. It was it was a good it was probably the best game of wild card weekend, um, the only competitive one. And then when they beat the pen, I think that was like people being like, okay, like big win Bengals, number one, like whoever wins between uh, the Bills and the Chiefs, that they're they're going to the Super Bowl because they're you know the Bengals, they're you know Joe Burrow is a second year quarterback, he's not ready to go to a Super Bowl. Well, lo and behold, here we are. And uh, you went when the Bengals upset the Chiefs. I I was over the moon. I was like, that is so fun. That is awesome. Uh, and I'm you know happy for you know Bengals fans like Frankie because uh, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> um, now that being said, all my goodwill and you know good thoughts and good vibes towards the Bengals, it has ended uh, to a way. I, I <laughs> I'm happy they're here. I I want the Rams to win the Super Bowl though, and and. It's interesting to me because the Bengals and the Rams, they have you know very different ways that they built their rosters. Um, they have different ways in how they're you know they they coach their team, but there are some similarities, uh, you know, in how they use receivers and how they uh, use their their running game. Uh, but I what let me step back a bit here. So what's cool about this Super Bowl? run for the Rams is so the Rams made the trade for Matt Stafford last year. It was January 31st or 30th. I always get the dates mixed up and they agreed in principle with the Detroit lions. And to make that trade, it was a clear, like, okay, super bowl is the expectation. Like, and then you, you have uh, the, you know, the, the trade for Vaughn Miller uh, and then signing Odell Beckham jr. And, and you have the memes of Les Snead going, like, I'm all in, right? Like, we're all in. And there, there were, this season, I feel like the Rams, we, we've had some big wins, but we didn't necessarily have, like, a dominant win, which is why I think a lot of people were like, hey, the Rams are a good team. They can compete with anyone. But a lot of people picked, you know, the Bucks to get back to the Super Bowl or the Niners to make it or the Packers to make it. And it's really interesting and, and probably, you know, something that we don't talk about enough is this is the first time uh, that two four seeds have ever met in the Super Bowl, which, which is fun and really cool. And and I, I feel like there's just a lot of positive vibes towards this game on both sides of it. And, you know, I, as, a, as a lifelong Rams fan, I became a Rams fan in 1999. I... Uh, you know, I saw them win the Super Bowl there, which was really cool. And then I saw them lose two Super Bowls since then. And it, you know, it it's even those two Super Bowls they lost. You know, those 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 you know take a while to get over. Anytime your team can make a Super Bowl run, it's such a fun experience. Uh, and there's an excitement. You like start to question, like, should I change my the wallpaper on my lock screen on my phone because like my, that might mess up my team mojo, like. You know, all these little things like that go on your mind and you get special media attention from all your players, which, which is a lot of fun. And I've enjoyed learning more about the Bengals this past week. And I, I, and, and of course the Rams as well. And I think next week it's the hype is even going to go, you know, to the moon. Right. 
You know what's funny, Peo? You mentioned the middle of the season because both the Bengals and Rams um, faced some mid-season adversity. The Bengals lost yeah. two straight games two consecutive times. Now, both times they were able to bounce back from them, but I remember the Bengals lost two games in December to the Chargers by 19 at home. They did battle. They did bounce back um, from a 24 nothing deficit in that game to make it a 24-22 game, but... Let's face it, the Chargers made way more plays in that game than the Bengals did. And then they lose to San Francisco next week in overtime in a game that they could have won, but at the same time, they didn't play very well in that game. The Rams, and you know this for sure, they they did not win a single game in the month of November. They lost at home to Tennessee, a team that did not have Derrick Henry in that game. They go to San Francisco and get blown out on Monday Night Football. And then they did play competitively against Green Bay two weeks later, but they still lost that game. So if you told me, pers- I mean, from my side, the Bengals, if you would have told me when the Bengals were 7-6, and six, oh, yeah, you're, you, you guys are going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> what? We may not even make the playoffs. At that point in time, the Bengals were trailing the Cleveland Browns in the <laughs> AFC North standings. I mean, what a time ago that was. But, yeah, it, it just – to the, the Bengals and what they've done since that point, and then the Rams, you mentioned them going all in with Matthew Stafford. I remember when that trade went down. I was eating Skyline Chili watching Super Bowl highlights on NFL Network, and I'm <laughs> like, well, you know, Stafford's never won a playoff game. I don't really know how good he's going to do with the Rams, but I watched that first Sunday night game against Chicago, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, this could be, you know, he's chucking the ball around downfield, and I'm like, this is the latest version of the greatest show on turf. So... I'm excited. You know, Matthew Stafford has always been one of my favorite non Bengals players in the league just because I've always thought he's better than what people give him credit for. It wasn't his fault in Detroit. The Detroit Lions are a clown show of an organization. Now he's with the Rams, a team that is all in. But I want to ask you so the game that stood out to me this postseason was the Rams Tampa Bay. And that, the Rams could have easily lost that game. Um, did you think they could beat Tom Brady and Tampa Bay on the road going in to that game? Um, I did. I really did. Um, and, and now, and that wasn't me just being a, you know, optimistic, biased, delusional Rams fan. Uh, I, I like we had beaten them uh, each of the last two seasons, once in Tampa, once in uh, L.A. And I really do think that the Rams match up well with the Buccaneers uh, from a personnel perspective. Uh, and, yeah, I, I also think, that, you know, it, just going into that game, there were there was very much a you know i don't know, like i don't like the the term like 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 we're not losing this game we're not losing this game you really felt something from the players that there was that extra push um and in that game you know they started off so dominant right and then everything was going wrong and you're i remember like you can watch my watch party and me like i was so quiet and i was having a hard time talking to my chat cuz i was like Please don't blow this. Please don't blow this. Yeah. And then when Cooper Cup makes those two catches that saved our season, essentially, that was the moment where I was just like, that is why you trade to get Matthew Stafford. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not convinced that Jared Goff would have been able to do that. And actually, you just saying that alone knocked out two. My question was one, how does Stafford really affect this team? And do you really think Jared Goff would have made it this far? So, but Hey, all right. That's, I don't have to worry about and, asking that. Let, let, let me just add that. Like to the Jared Goff thing, they have Goff. He 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 is a quarterback with some arm talent for sure. Um, you can criticize his football IQ. I often do. Um, there's just the reality is there's some things that McVeigh had to do from a coaching perspective with Goff that he does not have to do with Stafford. No, I completely agree. I mean, Stafford has been in the league since being drafted first overall back in 2008, Nine. 2009, 2009. 2009. And Jared Goff was the first overall pick from 2016. So it's been – that's a huge skill difference right there. And it's also this. Matthew Stafford has not won a playoff game ever in his career prior to this um, season. Now he has three. <laughs> now he has three. <laughs> so does so, Joe Burrow. So does yeah. Joe Burrow. I yeah, mean – the same amount. <laughs> They have the exact same amount. They're both first-round picks. They're both from the SEC. I mean, the, let's be real here. I mean, the comparisons go on. I mean, obviously, one is a second year, and Matthew Stafford is 13 now, 13th year. Yeah. So there's a clear difference in both talent, skill, and overall just who's been in the league more. But, Peo, you mentioned the Tampa Bay game. Now, I was very happy with how that game ended with the Rams winning. Um 
and Frankie and I, and also to an extent, you also know that there is a Tampa Bay fan that we have on the uh, <laughs> Perfect Season podcast, his name is Anthony. Uh, and my goodness, he was very adamant about the Bucks winning and repeating. And this, and Tom Brady going to stay for another two seasons. And they're going to win more rings. He lost in the divisional round. Tom Brady retires. Rams fans, congratulations! You have effectively ended Tom Brady. <laughs> After the Rams were the team that in essence started the Patriots dynasty. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, like I, I had a video um, about why I was happy Tom Brady retired. And, and I referenced the reality is he's, you know, the, the Oh one super bowl, he, you know, he, he, he came in and beat us and there was all the sketch about spy gate and things like that. But then, you know, fast forward to 2018 and he beat us in that super bowl too, which, I, I'm still ticked off that the Rams couldn't score more than three points in that Super Bowl. But that being said, I do think um, that, you know, it, it doesn't like correct those. You know, we still lost those two Super Bowls. It does have a satisfying feeling of being the one to like, okay, like he's done. And like Nick Scott picked off Tom Brady and that's how he ended his career. Loved yeah. it. Felt great. It's certainly, it's a certain great feeling to have, especially. I mean, look, no disrespect to Tom Brady as a Dolphins fan, dealing 20 years with him destroying <laughs> the Dolphins two times a year, and then him now going to my backyard, being Tampa Bay, which not a Tampa Bay fan, but having him 20 miles away from where I used to live. Oh, that just added insult to injury right there. So, <laughs> watching him retire was just something special. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong, he's a legend. I respect, I respect him more than any other football player ever to play in the game. Hey, well, like uh, Alex, I think we're getting a little sidetracked. We don't need to talk about Tom Brady. He gets yeah. well, now. Let's so talk I'll, about this game. I'll say I'll say this. I did pick the Rams to beat Tampa Bay because like you said, Peo, I, I didn't like the matchup for, for Tampa Bay because their offensive line was beat up. The Rams defensive line, they and this is a concern of mine going into the Super Bowl with the Bengals. The Rams can get pressure with just four up front. Leonard Floyd, uh, why I mentioned him before, Aaron Donald, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Aaron Donald, Von Miller, Leonard Floyd. And then you have A. Sean Robinson and uh, other cast members on that defensive line. But I was just thinking, okay, the Rams are going to give Brady problems because they're going to pressure him. And Brady, the way he's combat that over his career is quick intermediate throws. Well, who did he not have in that divisional round game that Alex and I both said he was going to need? Chris Godwin. I even said Peo going into that game. This is a game that Brady's going to wish he had like Julian Edelman to throw the ball to, and he didn't. And yes, it was a valiant effort coming back from down 27-3. to three. And here the Rams are now. They beat Tampa Bay. They beat San Francisco, which was their kryptonite for mm -hmm. three years. So, And, and that's why... Like, I'm looking forward to the matchup for, for that. I'm looking forward to Zach Taylor versus Sean McVay. Zach Taylor was on yeah, yeah, yeah. the Rams staff. And, Alex, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask this question to you, Peo. Um, what do you remember about Zach Taylor being on the Rams staff, and what did you, and what were your thoughts about him when he was with the Rams? I, I saw a huge Zach Taylor fan when he was with the Rams. Um, and there's a lot of Ram fans that maybe don't remember that much about Zach Taylor. I remember, remember him always being, you know, a class act, you know, in press conferences. He was never like, he was never like kind of boisterous or anything like that. And now he was a quarterback's coach for us. Right. But something that I always appreciated about Zach Taylor is, and a lot of people credit Sean McVay for turning around Jared Goff from his rookie season in, and he, you know, Absolutely. Like, you know, the Rams went from a four win team to a 12 win team, right? The, in the, in the, the moment Sean McVay got hired. And uh, I, I think that, um, or sorry, 11 win team. It was 11. Win. We went 11 wins that year. Um, and, you know, so Zach Taylor as Jared Goff's quarterback coach did wonders for him, right? And, and absolutely, like, you saw that improvement. And then I'll, I'll be honest, when he got hired by the Bengals, um, I was shocked. I was like, oh, okay. Um, I, I guess Zach Taylor goes from quarterback coach to head coach. And it's not him as a person that surprised me. It was more just, I think at the time, and, and it's changed so drastically the past five years. I mean, we have Josh McCown interviewing for the Texans job now. 
it, it always kind of used to be you hired coordinators and there might be an assistant coach or something somewhere along the line. Um, but those would be outliers. So it was just sort of a shock to see, Oh, like, okay. Zach Taylor obviously went in, he, you know, was able to interview for the Bengals job. And I think clearly the Bengals should be happy. They hired him. And as I recall coming into this season, Zach Taylor was on the hot seat. Right, like there were some people oh, yeah. saying that Zach Taylor could be like a mid-season like fire or something like that, and uh, here he is. He's got his team in the Super Bowl, and you know, give give him credit. You know, it, beating a team like the Chiefs, beating a team like the the Titans, especially the Titans. Zach Taylor has been out coaching his his opponents at times, and it's not like he's you know coaching against scrubs. I mean, you mentioned the Chiefs. Don't mean to one up you, but he beat the Chiefs twice, and that's yeah. Andy Reid. Andy yeah. Reid, Andy Reid is going is going to be a Hall of Fame head coach one day. He beat John yeah. Harbaugh twice this year. Beat the Ravens, but they crushed them twice. Crushed the Steelers twice, and Mike Tomlin. You could argue Tomlin and Harbaugh are going to the Hall of Fame one day. Um, they beat the Raiders twice. It's not easy to beat a team twice in one season. They, you mentioned the Titans, like so. Zach Taylor, um, you mentioned when he was hired, you were a little surprised. I, you know, I, I, I got, I understood why at the time the Bengals front office for years was criticized and hit on for not being forward thinking, aggressive, you know, or I'm sorry, progressive up with the times. So they took the easy way out maybe and went to Sean McVay and his coaching staff and they got Zach Taylor. Hey, there was a tweet I saw recently, Sean McVay, uh, on his coaching tree, an assistant coach under Sean McVay made the Super Bowl before an assistant coach that coached under Bill Belichick. So there's that for you both. Um, so Zach Taylor, like through the first year, I'm like, okay, what is he trying to do here? Like he says they want to be they want to be the fastest team on Sunday. He says they want to be you know whatever else they want to establish a culture, you know, high character guys. So the Rams. I'm kind of bouncing around here. The Rams went all in on star studded free agents. The Bengals went in their free agency. And this is not saying the Rams have players who are these or aren't these, but the Bengals went out and they got proven winners from winning organizations that were captains in their previous mm. stints at colleges and high schools, like Trey Hendrickson, Mike Hilton, Chidobia Wuzier, Larry Okunjobi, Trey Waynes, who yes, unfortunately has not worked out. And the other ones, like I just mentioned, have, you know, they have built a culture. And I give Zach Taylor a lot of credit. He's built a culture of high character players and players who really love football, like Joe Burrow, like Jamar Chase, like Joe Mixon, Tyler Boyd, and CJ Uzama, and T. Higgins, and this young core of players. And I was someone, I remember in Cincinnati, Mo Egger talked about on one of his shows on ESPN 1530 here it, before the season. What does Zach Taylor have to do to not get fired? Okay, go to the Super Bowl. And, but here's the other thing here's. You know, we talked about you, you mentioned Payo Sean McVay made Jared Goff a better quarterback. I think Joe Burrow has made Zach Taylor a better head coach. In the Tennessee game, I don't know if you heard this, and Alex, I don't know if you heard this either. There was on the last Bengals scoring drive before halftime. So the scoring drive that put them up nine to six in Tennessee. Joe um the headset communication went out. So Joe Burrow couldn't hear Zach Taylor. Joe Burrow had to call the plays on the field himself, and the Bengals still went down and scored. I've, I've said this. Joe Burrow makes Zach Taylor's job easier. That's not to say Zach Taylor still doesn't have to do anything. He does, and he's gotten better as a play caller this season, as the season has gone on. His play calling this postseason, I, I've been, you know, I, I give him credit. You know, he came out in the, in, in the wild card game, you know, in past Bengals playoff appearances, I think the Bengals would have come out timid. They would have run the ball. They would have played safe. No, you saw, you know, pass, 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 boom, touchdown pass, CJ Uzama. And Twitter was like, oh, my gosh, Zach Taylor is in a rhythm right now of his play calling. So while the hire at the time and through the first two years, you wondered, did the Bengals make the right decision? I think this year with Joe Burrow and all the talent, and he now has his guys around him, and people were saying, okay, he has his team. Now he has to win. Okay, you take your team to the Super Bowl. Clearly, he's he's doing something right. He was the right man for the job, and he's going to be here for a long time. But the Bengals are here because of Joe Burrow. They're here because Joe Burrow is a winning quarterback. He won a national championship and a Heisman Trophy and numerous other awards in college at LSU. He was a, you know, that that is what makes him a winner. And the yeah. Bengals are here because of him. Definitely helped having a 
quarterback. And, and uh, you know, I, I think it's funny. I, I, I was doing a collab with, with someone else and, and they, you know, they, they talked about uh, Joe Burrow and, and the Bengals and, and he, he was making the argument that the Bengals lucked out losing and getting the first overall pick that year. Cause wherever Joe Burrow would have gone, they would immediately turn the organization around, which, you know, I, 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 can't dispute that like the Bengals have done a good job building the team around Joe Burrow absolutely um and and you know even last year criticized for not picking uh Sewell and they, they picked Chase instead looks like that was the right choice oh absolutely <laughs> yeah I gotta give a quick shout out here to uneducated sports talk hello Carl he's saying go Rams should be a great Super Bowl I'm like oh thanks for the two dollar donation man that's really cool and I think um, it will be – and I and spoiler alert, I think it will be a great Super Bowl. And, Pale, you mentioned the Bengals' first-round pick this year, and I remember it, um, it was split here in Cincinnati. I was on Team Chase because my thought process was you don't know when another, when another great wide receiver like Jamar Chase is going to come around, and if you have a great wide receiver that can combat bad offensive line play because, yes, it does help to have a good offensive line, which the Rams have, and the Bengals do not. <laughs> but I always tell people, if you have five great offensive linemen, that's great. But what good does it do if you can't if you don't have receivers to throw the ball down the field to? Mm-hmm. You have to be able to have that. And the offensive line, for the most part this season, has allowed Burrow to hit Chase on deep passes. I mean, I think the Bengals have eight. Does Jamar Chase have like eight fifty plus touchdowns? yards? Eight fifty plus yard touchdown passes from Joe Burrow this year. Eight. The Bengals have 21 50-plus plays this season, I believe. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it is unbelievable what Jamar Chase has done. And this is how you win in the NFL, I think. Quarterback, great wide receiver. And the Bengals did that with Jamar Chase. Plus, Jamar Chase, coming from the SEC in LSU, having played with Joe Burrow. Panay Sewell came from Oregon. Do they play defense? Pao, you, you live in Pac-12 country. Do they play defense out there? Um, I, I don't live in Pac-12. I live in Canada. <laughs> Oh well, okay. Uh, see, see, I, I I didn't know that because the Rams. Okay, the, the Rams. You know, in LA, I, th- I thought you were in LA, which is no, no. Pac-12 I mean, funny, you know, okay, funny. but okay, but I'll, I'll rephrase the question. The, yeah. the Pac-12 doesn't play defense, right? I I don't know college football well enough to make that uh, that claim myself. I do apologize. Oh, that's um, okay. But I'll Alex, take your word for it. What's up, Frankie? Alex, the Pac-12 doesn't play defense, correct? The Pac-12 does not play defense. It is a pure offensive division. I'm sorry, okay. conference. Okay, so there you go. So Panay Sewell played in the <laughs> – by the way, by, by the way, Panay Sewell didn't play in 2020. Neither did nope. Jamar Chase. But an offensive line is such a technique-savvy position. Wide receiver, yeah, there is some technique there too. I'm not going to I'm not going to say there isn't. I'm not trying to be like a football coach aficionado here. But I was just, okay, Jamar Chase played in the SEC against premier teams with Joe Burrow, it made too much sense to pass it up. And they didn't. They drafted Jamar Chase. Many people were upset. Uh, I'm talking to Mike Tannenbaum here from ESPN. But, yeah, okay, Uneducated Sports. See, uneducated Sports Talk needs to change its name to Educated Sports Talk. Yeah, no or kidding. maybe like, or if maybe you watch like, the channel, um, it makes sense. I highly recommend go check out Carl and Uneducated <laughs> Oh, we will. We will. Oh, we'll we, probably we, check we, it right after this live stream. Well, he knows things. He knows <laughs> things. <laughs> And Jamar Chase, what he's done is he's given this, you know, you saw in the AFC Championship game, Payo and Alex, okay, the Chiefs defense took away Jamar Chase. All right, T. Higgins just had six catches, 103 yards. Yeah. This Bengals team, you can't, you can take away one player. Just know that one or two more players will beat you, a.k.a. T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. Two, the Bengals had three players this year ranked in the top 30 in receptions in the NFL. That's yeah. how good and deep this receiving core is. And the thing is, they're still so young. Like, Tyler Boyd's the oldest and he's still in his sixth year. He's just entering the prime of his career. Yeah, and and you know, Frankie, you, you brought up the offensive line, so I, I I I have to talk about this. And I we could not do a Super Bowl. You're welcome for Andrew game. Whitworth. Um, well, I, I like I I was good. we're definitely going to talk about Andrew Whitworth, uh, but I I I want to also talk about so pretty much any mainstream media journalist or whatever. They're gonna when they're previewing this game, they're gonna bring up the the that Joe Burrow got sacked nine times and he still won the game, which is amazing. Um, it is the in going into this game, it is a glaring like 
noticeable advantage to the Rams of our pass rush versus your O-line in this game. I know that there's coaching, there's things that you can do to, you know, take that away, but I'm asking you as a Bengals fan, what are your thoughts when you see, you know, you see on this D-line, Aaron Donald, Miller, Greg Gaines, Leonard, you know, and potentially Sebastian Joseph Day is coming back for this as well. You know, do, are you just that confident that Burrow can, you know, just get the ball that quick? Do you think that it has to be mixing in the run game, you know, to help take some pressure off? Uh, do you do you see the Bengals running a lot of screen plays and quick slants, that sort of thing? See, this is why the Rams, for as happy as I am for them and you and their fan base out in L.A., especially with that gorgeous new stadium out there, this is the one team I didn't want to face in the Super Bowl because I know Aaron Donald is one of the best pa- is one of the best pass rushers of this generation. I know uh, that Von Miller is one of the best pass rushers of this generation. Proof yeah. he won Super Bowl MVP, which is produ- which is won by mostly quarterbacks in today's day and age in Super Bowls. And they also have Leonard Floyd, who's had a gr- who's had a good career himself. And you mentioned some other players too, like Robinson and Joseph Day. So I'd be lying to you if I'm like, oh, yeah, the Bengals will be fine. No. What I am encouraged by is in the AFC championship game, you mentioned utilizing mix in the run game and the screen game. They did. Even Samaj P. Ryan, who actually I think is better at yards after the catch than what he's given credit for. Maybe he just doesn't get talked about as much as the other players on this offense. But I think you have to utilize a quick pass game. You have to utilize mix in the run game early. You know, One thing they did, the Bengals did in the wild card game, which I loved, was they used Jamar Chase out of the backfield. That got them some yards. You can use Jamar Chase on a flare screen, a flare route. Get him involved early. Get everybody a touch so you spread the Rams out, and then they can't tee off on Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow, you know, he claims he likes getting hit, and I do believe that now because, like you said, nine sacks against Tennessee – People, I was at that game in Nashville. Oh, cool! And people were walking out of Nissan Stadium, and people all around us are saying, "Oh, Andy Dalton would have folded in that situation. Andy Dalton would never been able to win this game if he had been sacked nine times." And and maybe that's true. That's no knock on Andy, but there's something different about Joe Burrow. But what I saw against the Chiefs was an offensive line that gave Burrow time to throw. And by the way, Joe Burrow is also pretty is is pretty nifty at avoiding sacks. Sometimes, I mean, he avoided Chris Jones twice yeah. on one play. Now, Chris Jones is no Aaron Donald. I'm sure you two can agree with me on that. But I think it's going to be a game where Burrow's going to get sacked maybe twice. If you can limit it to three, maybe four, and get the quick screen game going, quick pass game going, that'll open up some deep shots down the field, um, spread the Rams out a little bit. You just can't make it um, an inside-the-tackle box kind of game. you got to spread the Rams out, get to the edge. Um, but it, it, I would, I am worried about this because the Rams defensive line is so good. And Raheem Morris, one of the best, um, position coach hirings, assistant coach hirings of last off season. He, that Rams defense, because Brandon Staley was your defensive coordinator last year. And, and the Rams were number one in points and yards allowed. And the Rams maybe took a step back this year. Buffalo's defense was ranked first in both categories, but I mean, step back probably do, probably um, is criminal to say because the Rams' defense was still really, really good. I saw them beat up Arizona twice late in the season. I saw them beat up Tampa Bay in the playoffs. I saw them get after Jimmy Garoppolo and the Niners' running game in the fourth quarter last week. So I am worried, Payo, for sure, about the Bengals' offensive line going up against the Rams. But what they did last week against Kansas City's defensive line, which has three really good pass rushers, Frank Clark, uh, I'm sorry, Chris Jones, Jaron Reed, and Melvin Ingram. What they did against those guys, Burrow only gets sacked one time. I feel a little bit better, but it's still a tall task. I mean, you're going up against two potential Hall of Fame defensive ends, pass rushers, and another one who's really good in Leonard Floyd. Yeah, yeah no. and, and- Oh, go ahead, Alex. No, oh, sorry, sorry. The uh, no, I mean, you both bring up fantastic points when it comes to the game. I would like to just 
mention just some things. Uh, uneducated sports talk did say this is just something about uh, Frankie saying about Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is completely capable of catching, yeah, a two yard screen pass and being able to take it 70 yards at every given point, which could totally obliterate a pass rush attempt. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I absolutely think that, uh, you know, this Bengals wide receiving core is one of the best in the NFL uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. And coming into this game, something I've been talking about, you know, with my friends all week long is the Bengals wide receiving core versus the Rams wide receiving core. And, you know, not they're they're two very different wide receiving cores in the style and and just their their skills and abilities. Like obviously they can all catch and and run after after the catch. Um, you know, this is I I my one friend made a a funny comment. He's like, Man, they should just rename this Super Bowl the Yak Bowl because it's gonna be yard after the catch on both teams. Uh I I think it'd be really interesting. I'm looking seeing how the Rams can use Cooper Cup in this because I, I believe Cooper Cup is a factor. Um, I believe that Odell, you know, he's been playing at a very high level. Van Jefferson's always there. And now, Frankie, I, I, I can't preview this game without telling you he's actually my favorite player on the Bengals that, that's, that's, you know, I, I feel like he doesn't get talked about enough. I'd love to hear your opinions on him coming into this game. I feel like he's been balling out for you guys recently. Talk to me about Jesse Bates. Oh, I, I, um, I, I thought you were about to mention somebody on offense there, Peo, but Jesse Bates. Um, for someone that came into this season with um, some outside um, stuff, so to speak, yeah. surrounding him, yeah. and I think that was kind of distracting him as the season got underway. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you, his play this postseason has been nothing short of spectacular. He had a critical pass breakup on Hunter Renfro in the wild card game that if that play actually goes, the Raider, the Raiders, listen, for as much as the Bengals, I thought, played better than the Raiders in that game, if that play doesn't go the Bengals' way, the Raiders maybe score on that drive. That game might turn out differently. And then in the divisional round, first play of the game, Peo and, and Alex, first play of the game, Jesse Bates intercepts Ryan Tannehill. Now, Ryan Tannehill, I mean, I could go off about him, but still, he set the tone in that game that, hey, we're here to play. And then in the AFC Championship game, for him to make that play um, on Von Bell's interception, everybody remembers Von Bell had that interception. Jesse Bates got a hand in Tyreek Hill's face, tipped the ball down. Von Bell was right there to pick it off. Jesse Bates has saved his best football for the most important games, which is this postseason. And he is something you have to consider because, you know, so many uh, – there's one podcast to listen to called Tapeheads with Bob Oshuz and Dan Orlovsky and Scott Pioli. And Dan Orlovsky talks about how good Cooper Cup and the Rams receivers are at getting open, finding those open spaces. Jesse Bates, though, when he's at his best, he's a ball hawk. He's, he always seems mm-hmm. to be right where the ball is. And that would be a concern of mine if I'm a Rams receiver. So my thoughts on Jesse Bates are um, there was a comment I read earlier this season about, well, they should cut Jesse Bates, which would then save money for Burroughs extension. And I actually gave that some thought, but after what he's done this postseason, no way. There is no way. Now I will say this. There are other players in this secondary that I think you have to be weary of. If you're a Rams fan and the Rams coaching staff, I'll give you one name, Mike Hilton, our, the Bengals slot corner. Mm-hmm. I, I think he's had the best postseason. He was It'll tremendous up, in the, yeah. on, on against Hunter Renfro in the Raiders game. He was spectacular. Against Tennessee, spectacular. Had a critical interception in the red zone that snuffed out a Titans drive. Again, if that play's not made, who knows where the Bengals are. And then in the AFC Championship game, he had, I think, two pass breakups at the start of the second half that slowed down the momentum of the Chiefs offense and he also ha- he also made a great coverage play on the Chiefs final goal to go situation in regulation you know he stayed with Miko Hardman the wide receiver used his eyes Mahomes saw that couldn't go there so while Jesse Bates may be the player you first think of when it comes to the secondary I will tell you this Mike Hilton is going to have a say in this game I think he's yeah. going to have a say in this game and anyone could the Bengals have seven takeaways this postseason um, six interceptions, one by a defensive lineman. So you never know who's going to step up and make that play. They've had two linebackers with picks. 
They've had um, three secondary players with picks, and they've had um, a defensive lineman with a pick. So they can come from anywhere. But Jesse Bates has saved his best football for the most important games of this season. Oh. It, it, you know, it's funny because, you know, I, I think, and, and again, Frankie also, like, well done. I love hearing people talk about, you know, the, the players that not not everyone knows. So thanks for bringing up Hilton and, and the Bengals secondary. And in, in contrast to the Rams secondary, you have, you know, Nick Scott, who he came in for an uh, injured Taylor rap. And then Eric Weddle, who we signed out of retirement, he was the leading tackler for the Rams against the Niners last game, and he played every defensive snap. And you're like, okay, Eric Weddle is mm-hmm. is finding former glory again. And uh, you know, I, I I'm really it, it, you as much talk about the restore the Real Cup is guarding to and vice versa to be the Rams secondary guarding the Bengals wide receivers and the uh, Rams wide receivers being guarded by the Bengals secondary. And so I, that is you know going to be fascinating to see. And if you're a football fan, you're excited to see those matchups. Um, and, and, you know, the Rams, they've definitely been generating turnovers as well. Um, I, I would say that a lot of their uh, interceptions have been because of their pass rush forcing the, the quarterback to make you know, off balance or ill-advised throws, uh, which has really helped. And most of our, most of our interceptions have kind of helped us seal away games uh, as, as opposed to, you know, getting us back in, in a game to an extent. But uh, yeah, I, I, I am really excited to, to see, you know, the Rams secondary. I, I am nervous about Darius Williams. Uh, he's someone who's played at a high level. Um, and at times we've seen it this year. But also at times he just he for whatever reason there seems to be some regression to what he was last year uh, with the Rams, but I'm I'm hoping that he can uh, you know because uh, he'll likely be on Higgins even though the Rams haven't been doing a lot of you know man to, like they do ma- zone and man defense like any defense, uh, but they haven't necessarily had Jalen Ramsey just shadowing a solo receiver and. I, you know, there's debate within the Rams community is if this is a you know right thing to do, but I I I I just can't wait to see this game, man. Oh, <laughs> it'll be a fantastic game, that's for sure. The one thing I would like to mention is the Rams have, and this is mentioned by the Ramelia Sports Report, and if I'm saying that name wrong, please please uh, correct me. No, but you got it. Oh, I got it right. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. But the one thing I will say that they just recently said was that the Niners and the Rams have played three times this season. The Niners have had a killer, killer run game with Debo Samuel, Elijah Mitchell, the rookie who has appeared out of nowhere, and even Jimmy Garoppolo, who's got a pair of legs on him too. The one thing I will say is Joe Mixon is a top five running back in this league, maybe top three on this season. Um, To say the least, the Rams front four, front four, especially with Aaron Donald, Frankie, do you think Joe Mixon is going to have a hard time running, or do you think maybe he might be able to get a couple cuts and ups on towards the, like the edge? I think he will because the Bengals run what's called an outside zone run scheme. So I think you're going to see um, some misdirection runs. The touchdown against Tennessee, the offensive line moves one way, and then Mixon cut the other way. So I think he's going to be able to have some success running the football in this game because – and something that was talked about this week was um, the last time the Bengals played the Rams, Pale, I'm sure you remember this, was in 2019. And good Lord, this goes back to some dark days for the franchise. <laughs> this, is in, this, is, this is in London. Um, the Bengals were 0-7. The Rams, I think, were 4-3 and at the time. And Zach Taylor and his coaching staff, offensive coaching staff, were, were just trying to figure out how do we get a yard against these guys. Now you're seeing them go up against the Steelers and Ravens this year. And I said this season – the Bengals match up well with the Steelers and Ravens. Like when was the last time I ever said that? If I ever said that. <laughs> so Alex, to answer your question, I think Joe Mixon's going to have, I think he's going to have some success. I think he's going to have some, some of a say in this game. I think the Bengals are going to win this game with their passing game. Now, Pao, I want to ask you this. Um, one of the big matchups in this game is going to be Jamar Chase against Jalen Ramsey. Um, Tyler Boyd, a Bengals wide receiver said um, earlier this week, in a press conference, they're going to have to match us 
we're not going to not throw Jamar the ball because Ramsey is on him. Does Jamar Chase scare you in any way? Um, thinking about it from your perspective with Jalen Ramsey, who we all know is one of the best corners in the NFL, but does Jamar Chase in his yards after catch and his speed – and his, you know, just a build and like those two things, yards after catching his speed. Do those concern you? Um, so uh, and again, l- l- like I was saying, Ramsey won't be on Chase the whole game. Uh, if if that did happen, that would be very different than how Raheem Morris has been using Ramsey this year. Um, and and there it would have been a game plan thing for it, which you know maybe that's the right thing to do. Um. I'm not going to say it makes me nervous because the reality is if I had to pick any other cornerback in the NFL to guard Jamar Chase, there's not one I would rather do it than Jalen Ramsey. Um, And not saying, and that's no knock on Jamar Chase, you know, at at all. That's just, I I do believe, you know, in Jalen Ramsey and people talk a lot about the Matt Stafford trade. You know, one uh, one of the big blockbuster trades that the Rams did in building this roster was trading two first round picks to the Jaguars so that we could get Jalen Ramsey. And I'm pretty sure we've won that trade already. I'd say that's a big win on part of the Rams. And just Mm -hmm. just a little bit, just to mention, Jalen Ramsey did come from Florida State. Uh, (laughs) And of course, you had to throw that in there. I had to throw it in there. I had to. Is that where you are? I, yeah, I'm a student at FSU. Oh, so. cool. I didn't know that. Cool. Yeah, I was like, you know what? I had to throw it in there. Um, one more <laughs> quick thing. Um, riding with the Rams, another one. Joe Mixon is not top 10 for MVP odds in the Super Bowl. That honestly is very surprising to me. Huh. Who is top 10? I saw Matthew Stafford was first, then Joe Burrow. I would imagine Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, Aaron Donald, Von Miller, Cup, Cup Cooper Cup. There. Yeah. yeah, Cooper Cup's definitely in there. Maybe Cooper, Cup, like Cooper Cup should be like third. Yeah, <laughs> Cooper Cup should be third right okay, after. Now, let me ask you this question, Peo. So, what are your thoughts on Odell Beckham Jr.? Because we all know Cooper Cup is great, but Odell Beckham's come in, and I was like, well, who's to say this is going to work? It didn't work with the Giants, it didn't work with the Browns, but he's come in, he's been productive. You haven't heard anything internally from the Rams' locker room. What are your thoughts on him and what he's done for this offense? Yeah, o- Odell has been just a huge blessed team. He and 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 sure there were some growing pains at first, um, and and even throughout you know the season and the playoffs, there's been a couple of deep balls to Odell where it just seems like Stafford and Odell aren't on the same page for some reason. But Odell in the red zone uh, has been phenomenal for the Rams. Uh, he's had some clutch catches, uh, you know, against the Niners. That catch towards the end of the game, where he catches it for the first down, and then they they had a helmet on, him, and he kept composure. He didn't he didn't does anything to get a perch or anything like that. That added on fifteen. That like that helped the Rams win that game against the Niners. And Odell has just really come in here, and you've seen him really embrace the team mentality and you know similar you were talking about the Bengals culture I, I would say the Rams developed a really great culture under McVay that has helped him have had helped players like Odell come in and quickly just know that this is you know a me not we you know team that's kind of the the phrase that gets used a lot by McVay and, and the coaching staff and I honestly when when they signed Odell, I I knew we needed a wide receiver because we had just lost Deshaun Jackson to the weird like personal conflict stuff. We had just lost our rookie wide receiver two two Atwell to ACL tear. We didn't know we were going to lose Robert Woods, uh, and and I still wonder what this team would have been like with Odell Woods and Cup and Van Jefferson. That would have been crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, nonetheless. Uh, so yeah, he's been fun to watch. Uh, he still has some very strong hands. Uh, he makes some clutch catches for sure. And I, I like, I'm hesitant to say this because he really has gotten better as the more he's been with the Rams' offense. But primarily, he's been doing most of his damage to other teams in the red zone. And so I, I appreciate that. You know, when we get into the red zone defenses have to respect Odell. They have to respect cup. They have to respect Higby. And, and even, you know, Cam Akers has a nose for the end zone. Sony Michelle is kind of a power North and South runner. 
And so I, I love that, you know, we have so many weapons within the red zone that Odell was just able to be another chess piece in that, uh, you know, on that chess board, uh, you know, when the Rams offense is on the field. The uh, yeah, actually, you brought up a great point. Actually, when you were talking about Odell, I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know, what, who's one player that everybody's kind of forgotten about on the Rams' office, and that's being Robert Woods. Uh, going down with that ACL tear, I, that hurt. That hurt my fantasy team as well. But um, I remember I, I was when Odell Beckham was signed by the Rams, and he filled that sort of wide receiver two position. It to me, like I, I'm not even gonna lie, I completely forgot about Robert Woods until maybe the beginning of playoffs. Yeah, and and there there's been times this year in a couple games where you just you realize like you know how much you miss Robert Woods. I mean, since McVay got here, Robert Woods has never missed a game. Yeah, like like he like he's he's been such a huge part of this offense, not just in the passing game but in the run blocking game as well, and and even like when you see Robert Woods. Uh, you know, after the Rams won the NFC uh, title game, when you s- saw Robert Woods and Cooper Cup like hugging on the field, like I'm gonna go, I I I I, I, I teared up a little. I was like, oh. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's get back to talking about the Super Bowl. We we have m- m- maybe we have about ten minutes left here. Um, do you guys want to get into predictions? Yeah, actually, can I just ask one more thing and then we'll get into yeah, predictions? Yeah. So we've talked about offense. We've talked about defense. Uh, there's been one po- – I mean, and special teams as well. There's yeah. one position that kind of we haven't necessarily talked about, and that's the tight end position. I mean, oh. I understand it's no Travis Kelsey and George Kittle, but, I mean, you both have some very phenomenal tight ends, being Tyler Higby and C.J. Ozama. I mean, we talked about wide receivers. We talked about running backs. Like, what do we see these two guys doing? Well, and, I, how fit, I, and, and how fitting is it? Don't, don't mind me. Excuse me. How mine is it? How funny is it that the Bengals and Rams beat George Kittle and Travis Kelsey respectively to get to this point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and and Frankie, I'm curious. I I know I'm tracking Tyler Higby's. Um, uh, like it sounds like he has a chance at playing, but they're still not. He's still questionable. But uh, because both our tight ends, our our starters, got injured. Is there any word on Uzama? I haven't been following. The word this week was that the MRI was encouraging and that there's a decent chance Uzama is going to play in the Super Bowl. And if you had to ask me, given who CJ Uzama is, the heart and soul of this team, I'm I will I I will say this without a source. Just my prediction and my gut feeling is he is going to play. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a sprained MCL, which obviously is a lot better than a torn MCL. Which, by the way, Cam Chancellor played in the Super Bowl years ago with a torn ACL. So, or it might have been a torn MCL, but same thing, but same deal. Um, and, and, and with the ball, like, if you can get your goal play, right? Like, there, there's not a player out there. So, I, I, I'm optimistic that Higby is going to play. It sounds like they actually had some very similar injuries, which is kind of weird. Um, but that being said, I, I the, the tight end position is absolutely one that will be a factor in this game for sure. No question about it, because with C.J. Uzama for the Bengals, he's, you know, he can be used as a blocking tight end, but at the same time, he's that middle-of-the-field weapon. He can, you know, catch short passes, and he's so good at getting yards after the catch. Like, if he catches a five, if he goes, like, on a five-yard sit route, he'll spin and somehow get two to three extra yards. And he's also good at going down the middle of the field, and he's also got some good speed after the catch. Um, he's he, he just gives this team a dimension in the middle of the field where if there is nobody open on the outside with Chase and Higgins and Boyd's covered over the middle, teams are bracketing him. You have CJ Uzama for those easy yards. And when he gets going, this team that, that like I said, it adds another dimension to this offense. Hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So predictions. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, Frankie, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll give my prediction first. And uh, now keep in mind, I, I always predict the Rams win. I, I have predicted the Rams win every single week this year, and I've I've been right all um, except for you know the the couple of losses they had, the five losses they had in the season. <laughs> so you know that's my record, but you know whatever. Um, I honestly think uh, – so when I give a prediction, I like to give the score prediction but also kind of the flow of the game prediction. Um, and so I, I would love if, if you could do that as well. 
I, I do believe that uh, Bur- Joe Burrow and Matthew Stafford will be, you know, in high, you know, high expectations leading into this. And I think both of them are actually going to ball out and it will be up to their effective supporting teammates uh, in their wide receiving cores, in their run game, and both teams' defenses making plays in this. I could see each team having one or two turnovers in this game, and and not necessarily those being the thing that decide it, but those would actually be a factor in the game for sure. I do see this being a, a close game. I think it's going to be a fun game. I think if you're a football fan, you are going to be rewarded for your fandom, and you're going to enjoy watching this game. I, you know, it's it's two good offenses going head, head to head. Both teams have playmakers on defense that can generate turnovers. I do see this being a higher scoring game, maybe with some defensive scores, things like that. Uh, I am predicting a 35 to 32 Rams win. Well, I mean, if it ends up being that final score, I think, like you said, Payo, we're all in good hands as football yeah. fans. But, <laughs> um, you know, it's. It, Earlier, I said before the Super Bowl, before conference championship week, the Bengals are going to be whoever they play if they go. Because I go back to Joe Burrow. There's a certain effect that Joe Burrow has on this football team and that he has, as Zach Taylor said it, he has championships on the brain. So you're seeing at this postseason, he's going to get hit. He's going to, you know, throw some bad interceptions. Well, really only one. The one in the Tennessee game was completely not his fault. Um. So from that, uh, I, I was earlier this week, I'm, but then earlier this week, I'm like, eh, you know what? I, I think the Rams are so much better than the Bengals. It'll probably be like a 34-21 game. But then I, I've kind of adjusted earlier this week, and I keep thinking the Bengals' defense is good at forcing turnovers. They do a lot to combat their offensive line weaknesses. And I just think for as good as the Rams have been, I think they've been the better team this postseason. They have one dominant win over the Cardinals a good win over Tampa Bay, but that 49ers game was such a highly emotional game. And then you got, and then you, the, the Buccaneers game, I just think it's Joe Burrow. And I think you're going to see why he is going to be, you know, a championship winning quarterback throughout his, I don't think this would be the only Super Bowl he wins. I keep hearing people say he's the next Tom Brady, and sometimes that means he throws for 525 like he did against the Ravens, or it means he just throws for 148 like he did against the Raiders. He can win games multiple different ways, throwing for several different passing yardage totals. I think this game he's going to throw for around 280. I think the Rams' offense is going to show up, but I'm going to go with the Bengals in this game. I'll say, and and, and you know, at the rate the Bengals have won games this year, I'm going to say it. They'll win... 30 to 27, Evan McPherson from 45 yards at the gun. Okay. No, very cool. Very three cool. straight game winning field goals for Evan McPherson. Yeah. Well, and and you know, I again I, I love the Evan McPherson story heading into this. He's been a lot of fun as a kicker as well. I do gotta give a shout out to my own kicker, Matt Gay. Also been playing really well. He did have the miss last week, but other than that, I think that was only his second kick he's missed all season long. He's quietly been having a really great season as a kicker. And isn't he playing hurt right now too? Um, I think he has a couple of lingering, uh, you know, injuries. But he's, you know, I, I I trust him as my kicker going into this game for sure. Yeah. But anyway, guys, this was a lot of fun. Um, it was. It was. And, and uh, you know, everyone watching, thank you so much for for joining and being in the chat. Uh, we are going to end our broadcast here. Uh, but definitely go subscribe to Season Pops. The link to their channel is in the description below. And, uh, yeah, I, I look forward to the next time I collab with you guys. Maybe Anthony will come on in and uh, talk <laughs> to me about you know, the, the Rams Bucks again. <laughs> yeah, both, yeah, both our teams beat both of his teams to get to this point. So there's that. Very true, Rich. Oh, yeah, because he's a Raiders fan. Also. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. funny. Anyway, guys, I am going to send you off with our outro. Um, Frankie and Alex, stick around. We'll talk afterwards. And as always, everyone, oh, you know, let me say go Rams, but then Frankie would say, Who day? There you go. <laughs> Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>